This, this is the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. And the X is going up again. Brought to you by Miller Lite. The only beer of the Cowboys. Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Mahindra Tractors. Get the best seven-year warranty in Texas. And by Albertsons, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Now your hosts, Jeff Cavanaugh and Brad Sham. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Hello and welcome to the Cowboys Hour, our regular Monday night stop on Tuesday night because it was the Cowboys Christmas party last night. More about that in a minute. We are here at Omni Frisco at uh, uh, Neighborhood Services. We are here with a hearty group of cowboy fans give yourselves a hand please it's brisk it's december everything's decorated for christmas it's supposed to be brisk and it is it's in the 50s or so that might as well be sub freezing in texas it's brisk it's it just is brisk, brisk. Uh, and uh, that was the voice of uh, jeff cavanaugh lovely to have you with us on a tuesday night it's lovely to Thank be you. with you i'm very excited and interested in uh, this christmas party you guys are talking about well <laughs> why weren't we here last night brad uh, because of the cowboys christmas party at which uh... the the most eye-catching jacket i saw was worn by all pro tackle tyron smith <laughs> no. and he's our guest tonight no. welcome welcome tyron smith Hey, it's a little, no, it was. I'm not. It wasn't too flashy. No, it was eye catching. Yeah. Because first of all, first of all, let me tell you, Lyle Collins was going to be with us tonight, as you all probably know. He missed practice all last week, and well, Tyron will talk about it in a minute. When you talk about a guy manning up, what he did against Washington last week was <laughs> ridiculous. How well he played without any practice and. Uh, so they had a walk through this afternoon, and his back just kind of tightened up on him a little bit, and we decided it would be better to have him available for uh, some kind of practice tomorrow than for the radio show tonight. So <laughs> Lyle, yeah, no, I made an executive decision. Okay, all right. Uh, all right. Lyle gets a pass, and he'll, he'll be with us later. Now, the jacket that Tyron was wearing at the Cowboys' Christmas party last night at the stadium. Tremendous party. It's always a great party. All of the employees of the organization come and... Have a good time, and, and uh, it'll shock you, Jeffrey, to find out that Jerry's a decent host. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> I've, seen him ho- I've seen him host things. I, I know you have. Uh, I know you have. So Tyron was wearing what I would describe as what, what would almost have been a midnight blue uh, dinner jacket. It almost looked like a tuxedo jacket. <laughs> But it, but it was just right on the edge of being that formal with, uh, with the black uh, uh, velour lapels, yep. right? Yep. And I didn't get a look at the lining. I was afraid to look <laughs> directly at the lining of, <laughs> of that coat. What would I have seen? Um, it was just, it was like a little black, like a little black and a little midnight blue. Yeah. Uh, um, just kind of mixed into it. Um, I can't really describe that fabric. It's not really not a, not a suede, but it's like when you kind of turn, you can kind of just change the colors on you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, what are you guys doing right now? <laughs> well, I mean, we're just, are we are just talking about how Tyron Smith cut quite a figure in that jacket. It was not necessarily the most eye-catching uh, garment worn by anyone last night because there were a couple of others that were a little over the top. And yeah. Kent Garrison, the Cowboys' brilliant. Uh, oh, he's amazing. Guy. Yeah, he's in, in a video and and. Uh, um, social media and and I mean he's really truly a journalistic and film genius and he was wearing uh, his grandmother's drapes I, I think it was did you see Kent he was wearing a I can see that because he's a musician as well okay well there very you go creative. I mean it was red plaid very creative the whole suit was red plaid everybody can't carry it off Kent Garrison carried it off but it wasn't <laughs> quite like Tyron's midnight blue Dinner jacket. Where'd you get that? Uh, Lombardo's. Uh, I, I thought I'd let him do a plug. Yeah, so. it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. did you? Did you? At the risk of extending uh, suit jacket talk. No, no, no. Did I mean, you manage to pull this off by yourself? Because every time I wear something that looks even reasonably presentable, it's because a woman helped me discover it. Well, or, actually, he helped, he helped me with it. Uh, put the jacket and everything, the whole outfit together, and also Jay my, did. Yeah. And also my assistant, assistant Brenda, she kind of uh, helped me out. I, I'm horrible at dressing myself. I can't put anything together. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> I'll uh, be the first to admit it. 
Um, what size coat was that? You I'm not what, even sure. Don't you know what you wear? No. Okay. When's the last time probably you could buy a, something like that? Probably not a 40 that? long. Something off the rack. <laughs> <laughs> could you go into a store and buy a suit jacket off the rack? If you go to uh, DXL, yeah. Okay. So they do exist. <laughs> okay. That's good. All right. So that's, that just, I just wanted to kind of take you inside the party a little bit and see how we were doing. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, this mini buy, which you normally get after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you knew this year, at least you were on a seven-day cycle from Thanksgiving to last week, and now it's actually Tuesday. I don't know how to react to Tuesday. No, it's Tuesday, Tuesday, and it's Tuesday. And it's Tuesday. That's, <laughs> okay. that's my whole point. So that, that little mini buy, that, that kind of comes in handy this time of year, doesn't it? Yeah, um, kind of get away from it and um, let your body actually relax and heal from, uh, from that little 12-day uh, three-game what we had going on and how about mentally mentally um still staying in it kind of is really hard to get away from it but um kind of just mentally kind of get away from it um that's what the whole weekend was for it kind of just let your body relax did you watch football uh just a little bit I had to watch usc play a little bit see if there's one that pac 12 championship mm-hmm. and then um other than that just that was the only probably game i watched the whole weekend speaking of usc um you probably heard they're coming to the cotton Bowl. yes they are yeah now, you, that'll be the night before the team takes off and goes to Philadelphia. Will you be at the game? I might try to catch a little bit of it, but um, I, don't, I don't think I can be able to make the whole game, though. I mean, that would keep you out. That would keep you out past curfew, actually. Yeah. It's already cutting into my bedtime already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you stay kind of close to the program, don't you? Yeah. A little bit. You follow them pretty closely? Yeah. Do you? I uh, still stay in touch with some of the coaches there. And, um yeah, they usually take care of me when I go down for a game or anything like that, sideline passing and everything who, like that. Who are my guys to watch with them this year? Tonight is night one of scouting the college guys. <laughs> I know the quarterback, and I know the running back, Ronald Jones. Who else do we have? Um, well, the whole D-line in general, I feel like it's a, a good front, and um, especially, well, usually um, USC's offensive line is always you know, pretty stout, and um, you know, the whole team in general has been pretty awesome over the whole year. So I think the whole team is pretty good to watch. All right, so we will we'll scout. How many guys are on a college team now? <laughs> no, I'm gonna. I'm gonna well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get your notes on that because I've got the. Uh, I've got the. You got the game. Big Twelve championship. Yeah, I'll be doing the uh, Cotton Bowl on the radio on national radio. So I've got the Big Twelve championship game downloaded. So, uh, so I'll be watching that. I'll be dissecting uh, the University of Southern California, <laughs> and and will there be any? You have a couple of Ohio State players on your team. Oh yeah. Yeah. Will there be any? Uh, <laughs> Wagering? Uh, not sure. We'll see what happens uh, when the time comes. Do you have any social media accounts? Because I know Sean Lee won a bet where he cheated. Do you have, <laughs> do you, do you, he, who did he bet? It must. It was Jordan oh, Lewis, right? It was right? Jordan Lewis, yeah. He bet Jordan Lewis, mm-hmm. and it was the loser had to do something or other on Wh- social wear, media. It was yeah. wear a shirt yeah. of the other school. On social media, and Sean doesn't have any, so he couldn't have lost. But Jordan <laughs> didn't know that. Are you on any of them? No, not at all. Okay. Stay away from it. That's, that's probably a great move. <laughs> it's probably great. Do you get on other people's login names to no. see what people are talking about? Not at all. That's genius <laughs> that is so genius it's the most poisonous place on earth <laughs> but you Twitter. spend a lot of time there well yeah but i don't play because no, like the, the problem you is actually is, what you do is you lob grenades in yes and leave. the problem is is that people like me exist <laughs> and our job is to do radio which means that sometimes you're positive sometimes you're negative you try to be honest but when you're negative and you say things on social media you will have players who will search their name and then sure. it's like, oh no, I made so and so mad. I'm just players, really, I'm just players like work. you're talking about like athletes, not not social media players. No, I'm talking about the athletes. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Or you'll have other people on the Twitter who will hit reply and tag the athlete. And you're like, well, I didn't want to attack anybody. I'm just saying he missed a block. You know. <laughs> well, uh, since coming back, Tyron has missed hardly any blocks at all. Um, and we got we got a couple of minutes before we have to take our first break. So, uh, how frustrating was it? For, I know the head coach doesn't believe in frustrating, but uh, I mean, you worked so hard to stay healthy, yeah. And you take uh, such pride in being out there for every snap. Uh, wh- what did that do to you, having to sit out a couple of games? You know, it is frustrating, but. Um well, the thing is, that doesn't help out at all. It doesn't help the recovery process. It doesn't help you mentally. It doesn't? It doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, for the main thing is you've got to stay into it uh, mentally. That's extra, actually, extra film work. Um, 
extra just studying and little small technique things that you could do on your own just to the side. But um, these guys kind of trust your, trust the training staff and that they're going to take care of you. And you don't, like, pace the floor when the game is on and you... You know, the, the two, uh, the two uh, games I was out, it was, that was pretty frustrating. And it was just kind of just... Um, Did you watch? I watched it, yeah. I, can't, I, can't, I couldn't just sit there and not watch it. And so it's just frustrating and just you want to do something, you want to help, and just kind of just, you got to kind of relax, not relax, but just um, just know that, you know, you'll, you'll be recovered pretty soon. So I will ask this question because Tyron knows because I literally tell him every time I see him, I am his biggest fan. I am his biggest fan. Well, you got competition out there. No, no, I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> this man that, came from Germany. That's nice, but you're going to come through me. I'm his biggest fan, okay? Okay. Uh, Watching Chaz mm-hmm. struggle in Atlanta, what, that must have driven you nuts. You probably felt at the very least you could tell him, hey, do this or do that. Or I feel like I could have at least helped him be in his ear, kind of tell him, tell him what he could fix to kind of help him out throughout the rest of the game. But um, as far as that, as soon as, we got, as soon as he got back, I was kind of saying, like, um, you know, we got to get back to work. Anything that you need help with, let me know. And uh, let's get this thing right so it doesn't happen again. You're a man of a few words. I am. Uh, and you're a leader on the football team. And you're a leader in your room. You know you are. <laughs> you can sit there and shrug and look shy all you want. You don't have a choice. Doug left. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got to do it. Exactly. Uh, I mean, you know they all look to you. Yeah. You may not be the guy standing up and making all the speeches. They got guys with beards to do that. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, they, they look to you and you know it. Um, so... What's your leadership style? How do you choose to do that? Uh, well, for me, I usually just try like um, I try like show by example, lead by example, and um, I let my work kind of explain for itself, and uh, try to use that as for example for anybody that's under me. Okay, let's take the break then, and uh, and then um, and then I want to talk about that that block. Have, has everybody seen the little clip on Twitter of Tyron's block on the Alfred Morris touchdown? Yeah. I have not. Oh, have you not? I'm going to look it up. Oh, you got to go I'm find it. Look it up you got to go find it because it's something that you can't only watch once. You have to watch it like 5,000 times <laughs> and say, I know what's coming, but look what Tyron did to this And Tyron can't watch it because it's on social media. It's on social media. <laughs> but he's, he's seen it, though. He's seen it. We are at... Uh, We are at the Omni Frisco on the Cowboys Hour, our regular Monday night stop on Tuesday night this week uh, with uh, the Cowboys' great tackle, Tyron Smith. We are brought to you in part by Omni Hotel. Next time you travel for an away game, here's how to make the most of it. Stay with Omni Hotels and Resorts. They have 60 premier locations coast-to-coast with things like world-class spas, championship golf, and great dining. Visit OmniHotels.com to learn more and turn the next away game into a getaway weekend. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys. By Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. And by Lucchese Bootmaker, now open at the Star at Frisco. Shop from a variety of world-class handmade cowboy boots, as well as all new signature apparel and accessories. Visit their brand new store today. It's right over there. It's just right over there. Can, and if you were it. if you were here, you could see it too. Visit their brand new store today and experience the tradition that is Lucasi Bootmaker. Back with Tyron Smith on the Cowboys Hour right after this. to the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson, and broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Welcome back. We are live at the Omni Frisco, supported by Albertsons. It is the Cowboys Hour. I want to thank our special guest tonight, the great left tackle Tyron Smith, for being with us. I'm Jeff Cavanaugh, alongside Brad Champ. We enjoy doing this every week, and... We could spend a lot of time talking to you about being really good at football and how that goes for you. But actually, and we will. And we will. <laughs> but I actually wanted to get your perspective on a teammate. Mm-hmm. Demarcus Lawrence at this point has 13 and a half sacks. Yeah. And he's one of the best defensive players in the league at the moment. And I wonder, as somebody who practices against him every year, did you see it coming? Did you see this happening? Well, I saw it from the get-go when he first got here with us, and um, he just takes a lot of pride in as far as technique. And um, I saw this year from him, he kind of just took a 
kind of take a step back, kind of just look at the small things that, that would help him out uh, for his rushing and things like that that help him out throughout the season. And um, he always comes he always comes to ask questions as far as like, what do you see when this guy does this or what is your reaction to this? And so um, you, you can tell that he's really mature throughout these, the years that he's been here, so I am extremely proud of him. Are you ever tempted to not tell him the truth on an answer so that he can't beat you in practice? No, because I want to see him do well. <laughs> okay. okay, what a wonderful teammate. Did you ever uh, – did you see it coming when he was a rookie and you picked it up and you picked him up and threw him and broke his foot and <laughs> put him out for half a year? <laughs> yeah, why'd you do that? <laughs> accident. Accident. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how – that? but that must feel awful. When yeah. you do that to a teammate, and uh, um, even uh, if you're mad at the guy that day, which I don't think you were, but no, I'm completely down for the day. I'm like really hard on myself for something like that. It was really, especially was in a teammate, yeah. But I mean, you can't. That's just like part of the game. You you didn't do it on purpose. You yeah, it's part of the game. But you know, we're all in this game together, trying to accomplish the same thing. So it's just it sucks when you see a guy go down like that, especially when it's your fault. Do you ever get involved in the tussles in practice and training camp? I'm trying to think off the top. I know Zach and Tyrone Crawford, I feel like, get into it a little bit. <laughs> I, can't, I don't really think of anybody off the top of my head that you get into it with. No, uh, no, I'm usually the guy trying to break up everything. That's, yeah. that's a nice guy. Because it would require someone deciding it was a good idea to get into a fight with Tyron Smith. <laughs> okay, let's play that game. Who is the guy, <laughs> who's the guy on defense most likely to not care that you're Tyron Smith and be willing to tussle? Actually, it never, it never come to that. It won't let it come to that. <laughs> okay. So they're all smart. How, how about on another team? You ever find anybody who's just like crazy or trash talking or? No, usually the guys I go against is just like that. Uh, the mutual respect right there, and uh, it's never come to a point where it's talking crap or anything like that throughout the whole game. Now I have seen you get beat once or twice yeah. in your career. In fact, the guy that uh, that you'll be playing this week mm-hmm. had a day against you two, three years ago. Yep. And a different yeah, uniform. Got about $80 million out of that. He did, game. actually, from that game, yeah, probably much. as much as anything else. Uh, how do you handle that? It happens rarely. How do you how do you handle that when that happens? Um, well, like I said, well, I'm like really hard on myself for something like that that happens. And then um, it's nothing you can really do about it after the game, but as far as just clean up everything that, that happened throughout that, each play that he got beat on. And... Um, and so I just take a lot of pride in my technique, and so when anything falls apart, I'm like really hard on myself. So that was that was two years ago. We're it was, on, about a, it was on a bad Vernon. field, by the way. Yes, it, it was, was a bad field. It was a Tyron doesn't field. have to say it. I'll say it. In Miami, it was a terrible field, and then he did sign this huge contract with the Giants. What did you think when you saw that he signed with the Giants? You're going to get to play him twice a year. I was excited. I had another, <laughs> had a chance to redeem myself. Uh, and and so when you saw him the first time last year. Mm-hmm. Nobody said anything? No. There was no trash talk or anything like that. Okay. It just, uh, like I said, just uh, respect. Who inside this division? Because you guys are in a division where it almost seems like the Cowboys built this offensive line and the rest of the division reacted to it. When you look at uh, just the personnel they have in their front sevens, mm-hmm. it's some impressive front sevens in the NFC East. Yeah. Who for you is the biggest challenge out of those guys you go against? Or who's who's your favorite matchup? Who do you enjoy going against? Well, I enjoy going against our, anybody in our division, and I feel like it's always a tough matchup no matter who we go against. And um, I think it's for the team that we are, everybody comes and brings, our, brings the best. So I say equally throughout you know, each team, is, they have you know, the – they bring their stuff. So. Coach Garrett got to you. He did. Coach he Garrett got did. to Tyron. Um, <laughs> here's some more of these meatballs. Cause I don't think. <laughs> Coach Garrett got to Jerry this morning, by the way. He did? We were talking to Jerry Jones, and we asked him, you know, do you, you, know, do you feel like you certainly got to win out? And he was like, well, I think we'll take it play by play, <laughs> quarter by quarter. <laughs> we, you know, that's, we're just here. <laughs> okay. Well, Jerry may have, may have been still enjoying the party from last night. <laughs> oh, okay. that, was, that was part of the po- possibility. Uh, so I was talking to Lyle Collins this afternoon before his back kind of started to spasm up on him. And we, hey, he, we had a conversation, and I told Tyron this before we went on the air, that was reminiscent to me of conversations I've had with Tyron about his development. LC was talking about how playing Joe Kerrigan was an all-day event, and uh, he realized that he couldn't play him like he played everybody else because Kerrigan is really good with his hands and works to get your hands off him and so he had to and and I told him I said you sound like Tyron so because we've had that conversation um, people see you now uh, they forget how young you were when you came into the league mm-hmm. 
and that you didn't walk in the door and become an all pro right away. You were a right tackle your first year, yep. right? So just just tell everybody the story a little bit about how you learned to play tackle in the NFL, how it was different from college and what you had to do differently. Well, in college, I feel like you could get away with muscle and everything. And um, I knew that coming to the, coming the week, is you can't muscle everything. I knew it was a lot of technique and study and things like that. And so I, my first year, it was a lot of me trying to just, just learn everything since it was a lockout. And so I had, had Kyle Koja next to me telling me everything to do, every play. Okay, <laughs> wait, th- that's right, and I, and I forget that. So it's 2011. Yeah. And so he's drafted ninth overall and cannot come talk to the coaches and cannot come to the facility because there is no CBA. They're all locked out. Oh, wow. So welcome to the NFL, but don't come in here. <laughs> don't do this. So... Kyle Kozier, who was the the right guard, I yep. guess. So how how did that how did he get to you? Did he call you? Did you seek him out? Did someone point well, you in his direction? Well, no. He um, actually just pulled me to the side and just told me everything I needed to know. And so um, after you came in, yeah, as soon as I got here. Um, so what did you do? the The draft is in April. April. Mm-hmm. The lockout ended in June, didn't it? Yeah. Like just like it, like. Days before camp was supposed to start, yeah, you played Call yeah. of Duty. Yeah, I was I was in Milwaukee training. <laughs> oh you yeah, are. better idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. better idea. Yeah. <laughs> and they just got a phone call saying, "Hey, can I come to camp? Got on the next flight to go out there, you know, San Antonio." And so to that point, you've talked to no but none of your coaches. You've talked to none of your uh, about to be teammates. Mm-mm. And Hudson Houck was the line coach, yeah. right? Because I remember he said he was. He wanted to stick around another year or two for the opportunity to coach Tyron Smith. <laughs> uh, he did. He scouted you, and he wanted to. He wanted to make sure he got a chance to to coach you. Okay, so you go to San Antonio, and now Kozier finds you, and he says, "Hey, kid, come here." He kind of just go over the playbook and just kind of things I need help with as far as that. So he he helped me out as far as every game. He helped me to play. I could just go out there and play freely because he kind of just told me which every which, game. Yeah. He kind of just told me things I need to know, things I had trouble on, and um, I, and, you know, my first time doing a, uh, doing the whole preseason deal, I was going against the Vikings. And I just kept doing the same set over and over again. And this guy told me that, hey, you're gonna learn the hard way eventually. And so we're um, coming up, to, coming up to play Philly, play at home, and um, regular season, then. yeah. And I just I try to use the same set, try to try to muscle everything, and then I just got kept getting beat and beat. Who was the guy beating you? It was Babin. And then he was just a spin master, and he spinned against everything. And um, it was just probably one of my worst games. And it was just, you know, I'll never forget it. Like, um, just learning how to play patient. I was just trying to just kill him every time, and he just spinned off of it every time. And so after that, the next uh, the next week, D. Where kind of put me to the side and kind of just taught me you know, like this. You know, in this game is all patience and it's all technique, and so it slowed everything down for me, and uh, it was a big help. It is the Cowboy Hour. We are here at Neighborhood Services at Omni Frisco with the great Tyron Smith. Uh, we'll be back in just a little bit with more. I want to thank a couple of our sponsors. <coughs> Excuse me. Jack Black Skin Care. Say goodbye to painful razor burn and bumps when you upgrade your shave with Jack Black's pain-free shave system. Now $10 off your order of $50 or more when you visit getjackblack.com slash cowboys. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. And Albertsons and Tom Thumb, you get 10% off your groceries at Albertsons and Tom Thumb every Dallas Cowboy game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey and enter for a chance to win tickets to the next Cowboys home game courtesy of Albertsons, the official supermarket of the Dallas Cowboys. Back with more with Tyron Smith in a minute. For over 30 years. To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson, and broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. And welcome back to the Cowboys Hour. I'm Brad Sham with Jeff Cavanaugh, our special guest, the Cowboys' great tackle, Tyron Smith. Uh, we welcome especially, we're delighted to have all of our listeners anywhere you're listening around the Dallas Cowboys radio network. But we'd be lying if we didn't say special thanks to those of you who have come out uh, we're not uh, not quite yet enjoying these heaters that they promised us were coming, but I think they're going to be here any minute, and they're going to warm us all up. Uh, so, and just any minute, Jeff, any minute, right on time. But 
for those of you who are just here because you love the Cowboys and you love Tyron Smith, and by the way, you could come here to uh, the whole area around the star and knock off a bunch of your Christmas shopping and see the pretty lights and all that, thank you for coming. We'll have a microphone passing amongst you if you have questions you'd like to uh, ask Tyron a little bit later. Those of you who are watching us on uh, DallasCowboys.com, streamed live and later in right there in that little box. You guys just raise your hand in your living room <laughs> yeah, during the question back. portion, yes. and we'll see if we can get to you. And no one will, no one will respond, uh, <laughs> but, but we, do appreciate, we do appreciate you doing that. So we were talking to Tyron before the break about his education as a tackle, and one of the reasons that it's interesting to me is that Lyle Collins is going through a little bit of the same thing. His first full year playing tackle in the NFL, and, and uh, he, Lyle said to me today that the game is beginning to slow down. For him. My, my initial question to him was, he was the starting tackle the first game against the Giants, and that feels like about three years ago. Yeah. So I said, how, how are you a different, better player than you were in that game? And he talked about, Tyron, all the things that I've heard you say before about the game slowing down and learning how to watch film and some of the things you were just talking about, like learning you can't, okay, you can't take the same pass set yeah. all the time. And um, how, how much over from one year to the next, so your second year, you're the left tackle. Yeah. F from year one to year two, how much better were you? Um, I had a better understanding of the game, and as far as I had, Co I had Coach Callahan, which is he's the technique master for everybody, and um, he kind of just helped me out. Took a lot of time out of his, you know, whether it's in between drills or after practice, before practice, and kind of just was going to get it right, no matter how long it took. Uh, it was a little rocky beginning, but after a while, I kind of start realizing how to slow this whole thing down for me. And, the, the and I, this technique thing fascinates me. I mean, you played for you played for Hudson Houck, one of the greatest offensive line coaches ever. You played for Bill Callahan, one of the greatest offensive line coaches ever. You're playing for Frank Pollock, an outstanding coach who learned from, was coached by, and coached with, and learned from Bill Callahan. Yeah. So when you talk about the technique stuff, uh, you, you got a whole bunch of people here, most of whom have never gotten down with their hand on the ground and tried to block some Olivier Vernon kind of guy. What, what kind of technique things do you work on? And well, what do you still work on? Well, as far as like who you're going against, everything always switches up depending on what kind of guy you go against, so whether it's a big strong guy or a guy just like to rush off the edge or kind of avoid you or anything like that. So you kind of switch up everything. And, um, you know, for us as, as tackles, it's a game of angles for us as far as like where the guys line up. And it's always beating that guy to that angle. And it's, it's a matter of how you're doing it and as far as it's – and it's all just straight counter for us. When you're talking about a game of angles, you're talking about like inches, right? Yeah. Where you where you put your foot, where you put your hand, where he lines up, over what part of your shoulder, all that kind of stuff. Yep. You're saying that that makes the difference in a successful play or not? Yeah, depending on whether you get to that spot before he gets there, and it's he has nowhere to go either through you or taking both either inside or outside. And so I feel like as long as you play square against any guy. You, you, Pretty, pretty successful. I heard Michael Irvin on TV. He said you just kind of do like this and stay there for three <laughs> seconds, and then you're good. That's 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 what I heard. Can you relate to having been a college receiver? Can you relate to any of the things that he's talking about? Oh, no, we had to block. It, totally different, 100% different. Uh, and I'm uh, 6'3 and not the most fleet-footed of the receivers, and so staying in front of people can be a challenge in all that space. Uh, but no, I'm going to just go with no. I know nothing about it <laughs> I at mean, all. the only thing that I've, over the years of going out to training camps especially and watching line coaches, uh, both offense and defense especially, uh, talk about, no, 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 Ernie Stotner, God rest his soul, Hall of Fame defensive lineman, was the, was the Cowboys defensive coordinator and D-line coach under Tom Landry. And, and uh, Ernie was nasty. He was a nasty player mm -hmm. and the quietest, most soft-spoken guy. You would never hear him. And, and you could get close enough in training camp and practice to hear him. He would talk to Ed Jones. He would say, Ed, Ed, you, you, just, you can't put your foot there. Move it over six inches. That's good. And lift, move your hand over. Yeah, that's good. And now do, and I would say, Ernie, what the hell? Seriously, <laughs> man. How's that going to make a difference? And you're saying all that does make a difference. It does. Uh, it, takes a, it takes an effective war, whether you get off the ball quick enough, uh, whether your feet's too close or things like that. And you look at film, and 
you see just a little small thing that you could have done better as far as where your foot is or is your foot too far back and things like that is your stance too wide and so you you always have to think of something like that to where after a while everything just comes second nature for you have you found that gift yet the what? The GIF. Oh, no, the GIF. I, the, I think it's GIF. Well, I think, Whatever actually, I think the guy who created it says GIF, but Whatever. everyone else says GIF. GIF. Have you found it? No, I haven't. Talk to Tyron for a minute. I'm going to find it and send it okay, to you. Okay, I'm going to talk to Tyron. Uh, so <laughs> one of the things that I always wonder about is, since you've been here, he went through the different offensive line coaches. Yeah. Have they changed much since you've been here in terms of schematically, mm-hmm. the offensive line, how you guys do what you do. Have they changed much? Or you... uh, not too much. I, it changed mostly when after my first year, after okay. switching completely different office line, office line coaches. And uh, Callahan just brought, brought a different scheme when he came to us, and then Frank came here, and then it was the same type of scheme. He says it was since Callahan coached Frank before. And oh. So it was the same type of stuff. And um, and so we just picked up right after, after that. So when you're doing that, you'd probably gotten kind of used to having Ron Leary as the guy next to you. Yeah. And then this year, there was a little bit of Chaz Green and now Jonathan Cooper. Mm-hmm. And I think people who watch the game and really watch you guys block understand there's a lot of teamwork involved in what you guys are doing. It's a lot of communication. Knowing when a guy is supposed to, okay, we have him. Now I'm going here. you got to get here. Mm-hmm. Uh, how long does that take to get accustomed to a new guy next to you? Um, you know, we... When our, our room is, we're kind of like family, so the communication part shouldn't, isn't, isn't too bad. And it's, um, since we always do everything together, everybody knows what everybody means, usually, on the line. And uh, when one guy is out and the guy, next guy comes in, he knows what the communication is, even if we throw our own little slang on it just so we can feel comfortable with it. And they betray, they, everybody tries to make a joke as far as they can't really understand me during the game because <laughs> <laughs> I usually just grunt, but usually if you know me, you know what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> you just have to understand the inflection. Tell, tell them about you and Ron Leary, the way you communicated. Uh, the way me and Ron communicated, he mostly just called my name out or could say his T, and I knew what he meant. And then, and if I hear me just kind of just, hey, Ron, 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 he, you know, he knows that. Something something's, bad something's, something's, something's coming. Okay. Or like, and we'll talk mess just to kind of just throw guys off. And then um, he was a guy that we kind of came up with our own. It seemed like we came up with our own little language. <laughs> That's just not fair, <laughs> Tyron. Like, you, like you, you would invent words that just, just you kinda, understood? Yeah, just kind of throw guys off. And um, it helped out a lot, yeah. Do you guys have, um, now, we don't like when this happens, and it doesn't happen a lot with this line. But somebody beats you clean off the ball. Mm-hmm. You barely get a touch on him. Your quarterback can't see him. Is there something you do there? Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Hope he hears you. <laughs> Throw it. <laughs> get rid of the ball. So uh, Jeff's point about, you know, if Chaz was playing next to you for a while, then Coop and Jonathan Cooper's kind of settled in. Mm-hmm. Uh, that takes, Ty can't imagine, even within the course of a season that you're going to get anywhere near the communication that you had with Ron for several years. Yeah. But how's that gone? How is it improving with Coop at least being there all the time? Oh, it's been great. Um, you know, we remind ourselves before every game or even during practice, hey, talk to me, communicate with me. And so this is... Remind- Wait, you say that to him? We say it to each other. And uh, before you get in the line, kind of things to alert to. So you're not alarmed when you get to the line. And um, it's been going well so, so far, yeah. So... Uh, with Lyle, I was able to get onto his Instagram and go check out and prepare for, hey, you can ask Lyle Collins about all these different things. These are things that he does. And with Tyron Smith, uh, the internet is blank. And so you're sitting here, and I'm like, okay, we'll just ask it totally Mm open-ended. When it's not football, what are some of the things that you enjoy? Well, for me, I'll hang out with my little boy, my little five-year-old, and... uh Play, hang out with him a little bit, and then for the most part, I'm getting treatment, hanging out at the house, either, and mostly playing video games at the house. What video games? Uh, pretty much everything. Um, I stay away from the sports games. There's too much going on in sports games. For They're me. hard these days. Yeah, it's just too many controls. There's, there's too many buttons yeah. on the controllers. <laughs> Back in my day, we had A and B, and it was, and I wasn't even very good at those. 
<laughs> you don't know how many buttons they have on control. No, in right. just a minute, I'm going to tell all of you about dial telephones, <laughs> rotary phones, where you actually had to you know turn would, the dial. What would bother me about that is, what if you messed up the number on, like, this sixth number? You had to push the little button, the hook, and start all over. That's a half-hour process. You're telling me. <laughs> Absolutely right. I thought dial-up internet was bad. Um, can we talk about your son just for a second? Yeah. Um, He's kind of the, he's the typical apple of your eye, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. He's the deal. And uh, he has not, you, you haven't been able to have him with you his entire life. No. A couple of years, right? No. Uh, how, having him be here, having him be so close so you could spend so much time with him, mm. what's that done for you? Uh, it's, it's done a lot for me as far as it brings uh a certain happiness to you that you don't realize, and it's probably the it is the best thing that has ever happened to me. And um, no matter how, the thing is for me, no matter how angry I get as far as games or things like that, and just looking at him, seeing him smile, it tells you that everything's gonna be all right. When you go home, win or lose, he's just happy that daddy's home, right? Yeah, and then he's starting to pick up on my little tendencies a little bit. Uh oh, uh, let's hear as, about that. As far as just being angry after a game, after a loss, or something like that, just kind of just quiet and things like that. And I don't want him picking up on things like that if it's from me. You're getting the hint. You can listen to this, youngster. Why are you pointing <laughs> to me? Because your day's coming. Uh, uh, they're sponges, you know. Yeah. They just completely soak up things that you have no... They, they pick up on things you don't even know you're doing. And suddenly... You see yourself doing it, and that will set you back for a second. Yeah. So when you say you get mad after a game, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I mean, I think we know each other well enough for me to be able to say to your face, that just scares the hell out of me, the idea of you coming <laughs> home and being mad. Uh, so how, do you, how does that manifest? What do you do? Um, I, get, I just get real quiet, and it really keeps myself. And, just, and you're playing, you're replaying everything? It's like, what went wrong? And... Um, it's really don't have really much to say. It's just, I just like keep to myself for the whole night. And what have you noticed him doing? What's his name? Jackson. What have you noticed him doing? Uh, he started to be the same thing. Start, start doing the same thing as far as quiet, not really want to say much. And when he's upset about something, he doesn't really want to say why. And it doesn't have to be your game. Yeah. And he just started to pick up, just park it, picking up on things like that. But he's doing better, though. No, I better. <laughs> Got him figured out. Well, yeah, they won. Yeah, you guys just won. It's getting better. Well, just win the next four, <laughs> and then if you have more after that, win those, and you guys will be in great shape. Uh, yeah. it's, you, you think it's getting better? <laughs> I mean, can I just tell you? Oh it's no, not, it's not really getting better. Oh. You, you got no idea what you're in for. But good for you. Keep trying. Uh, this is the Cowboys Hour at the Omni Frisco uh, with uh, Tyron Smith. Uh, would you like to read some of these? Is it your turn or my turn? It's, it's my your turn. turn yeah, my turn. turn. So I will read a couple of these and say that we are brought to you in part on uh, the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, uh, supported by Albertsons. We're brought to you in part by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, and by Omni Hotel. Next time you travel for an away game, here's how to make the most of it. Stay with Omni Hotels and Resorts. They have 60 premier locations coast to coast with things like world-class spas, championship golf, and great dining. Visit OmniHotels.com to learn more and turn the next away game into a getaway weekend. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys. Those of you who are here with us at the Omni Frisco, if you have a question for Tyron, hold up your hand when we come back. We'll get a microphone to you. We're with Tyron Smith of the Cowboys, and we'll be right back on the Cowboys Hour. to the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson, and broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. All right, welcome back. Uh, I got sidetracked here on the Miller Lite Cowboy Hour watching this highlight that Brad Sham sent me of Tyron hurting some poor soul. Did I lie? Who Did is 72? Which is it guy? 72 or 79? I think his number changed by the time you... The, 72, yeah, it was very unfortunate what happened to that man. Tyron Smith with us here on the Cowboy Hour. And trust me, he just got us a touchdown. It yeah. worked out really, really well. We are brought to you in part by Jack Black Skin Care. Say goodbye to painful razor burn and bumps when you upgrade your shave. With Jack Black's pain-free shave system, now $10 off your order of $50 or more when you visit getjackblack.com slash cowboys. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. Also by Albertsons and Tom Thumbs. Tom Thumb. 
We have thumbs, but it's Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb. Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries at Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Every Dallas Cowboy game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey and enter for a chance to win tickets to the next Cowboys home game, courtesy of Albertsons, the official supermarket of the Dallas Cowboys. And finally, Lou Casey Bootmaker. It's there. It's right there. 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 It's now open at the Star and Frisco. Shop from a variety of world-class handmade cowboy boots as well as all new signature apparel and accessories. Visit their brand new store today and experience the tradition that is Lou Casey. You know, maker. not only is it now open, it might actually be now open right right now over I there. So in the boots right now without our heaters to get something up to here. You know? <laughs> is the heater not working for you over there? Oh, no, yeah, yeah. This gift, if you get a chance to find it somewhere that, that I sent Jeff because I knew he would appreciate it, and Tyron's seen the play. He knew immediately what he was... What I was talking about on Alfred's touchdown, he's in his stance, and he comes up and he engages the guy, and and, and it, it's kind of a standstill for a nanosecond, and I'm not exaggerating now. Tyron drove the guy. It's at the one-yard line, and Tyron drove the guy back literally halfway into the end zone. It, it's, now, well, it's really unfortunate for this poor guy because he realized I've got to get sideways, and then you get to just pile drive it. That's kind of unfortunate. You guys don't often get into the frogman stance, do you? The four point? You guys were in yeah. a four point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. For just go, for, like for goal line, Always yeah. down there? Yeah. Like it. Low man wins. <laughs> so did, did, you, did you know how far you were driving him back when you were doing it? No. no. And when you looked back at it, did you have anything... Rem- even remotely close to the reaction that I'm having to it when you looked at it? No, I was like, hope we score. <laughs> you hope we score? <laughs> you guys don't get some sort of sick joy out of, like, if a guy jumps to try to bat down a pass, and you're like, oh, sweet, I get to knock him down. Or if a guy's like, we're engaged, and I'm going to try to swim move, and you're like, oh, great, I get to bury you. That's never exciting? <laughs> it's always exciting, but for us, it's kind of just, we always got to just move on. <laughs> okay, all right. all right. Okay, Jeremy's got the mic, and we've got some questions from the audience here. we got Brandon from Dallas. Hey, guys, I think uh, something that doesn't get talked about enough with the loss of Zeke is obviously you lose one of the best rushers in the NFL, but you also lose a great pass blocker. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that really has contributed a lot to the struggles of Dak and even the offense as a whole because you didn't have you for two games and Zeke and then didn't have Zach Martin and Zeke. Now moving forward for the next two games, how do you all compensate for not having Zeke there to help you with uh, pass blocking? And what do you all do moving forward? Can I just say having Tyron helps? Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) Having Tyron is, like, better than... Yeah, you know, for us, we uh, we have complete confidence in our backs, and um, you know, any any one of those guys can fill in the spot for uh, for them. And Nate has been doing an awesome job. And as far as uh, anything is we need to fix, you know, they always willing to willing to learn, willing to learn, and willing to pick up anything that'll help out for the next week. So they've been doing a heck of a job, yeah. Jeremy, we got another one out there. Did I lose Jeremy? Jeremy's figuring it out right now. Oh. We got one. Not right now. Okay. 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 We'll right. move right along. Uh, let's. Uh, Lyle Collins was going to be with us. Uh, is back is acting up a little bit. We'd like him to be uh, able to practice this week, so we decided not to have him sit here under the intense uh, heat wave of these heaters. Yeah, so you don't want to expose him to that. We didn't want to do that. So, but you can talk about him though, um, because it's clear that you have taken him a little bit under your wing, mm-hmm. as was once done for you. What have you tried to? work on with him what of yourself if anything did you see in him that you thought he might respond to well for me i know that um he's willing to always trying to pick up on and lean little things that things that i do and then um for anything like after practice i, I try to help him out with just the biggest thing for me is just get him comfortable because we're comfortable with that spot so where he doesn't feel like stiff and rigid and everything like he's playing and so just trying to get a stance for him that's comfortable, something he could come exploding out of, and um, just trying to get him to be extremely patient and not just throw his head into everything. And just, I was trying to tell him every time, just you don't have to kill everything, man. <laughs> and so he's been, um, it's just it's always just the little small things, and then he's been picking up on it, so it's been doing well. And, and you recognize that because you tried to do that when you started too, right? Yeah, you know, he's, you don't have to muscle everything. It's a long, it's a long career, so you got, <laughs> you, you got to. You got to improve the technique so you can last long. God willing, right? Yeah. Let's take it back out to Jeremy for another question. We got a question from Maria from Carrollton. Hey, Tyron, how you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Hey, I call you uh, my uh, Tower of Power, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, growing up, who's been the most influential person in your life, and why? Uh, growing up, I would say I would say my high school coach. Growing up, um, 
he just kind of really looked out for me and gave me all the opportunities to get to college and um, looked out for me throughout the whole step of the way. And I still talk to him to this day. And, and he was just the guy that just looked out for my best interest uh, going forward. So, yeah. Did you play with anybody in high school that ended up making it to the league? Um, we got a few guys that's in the league. Um, uh, they pretty scattered around all, the league, all over the place. Right okay, because I saw that, again, on the Internet, I can find things about Lyle Collins. And I saw that in high school he played 3A football, mm -hmm. and Jeremy Hill, the current Bengal, was his running back. And they lost in the quarterfinals of the state playoffs. Yeah. And I wanted to ask him how in the world did an NFL back and an NFL lineman lose in the 3A state playoffs? Yeah. Did you guys win at that level? Uh, for our team, we just went, like, we went second round playoffs almost every year. But it was just, it, it wasn't one of those, it was a big school, but it wasn't like a big division school. And so um, it was just the same thing every year. It was just, it was, it was fun. Could you have done more? Like Did you play both ways at that point? Yeah, I played D in and then uh, tackle, yeah. How much fun was defense? It was fun. It was just, I didn't really know what I was really doing out there, but just trying to hit the guy. And then, it, I guess, right when you get to college, it's like, obviously, you're a tackle. Yeah, We're done with oh, that. completely, yeah. You just got to have fun in high school? Yeah. Was that was that your choice at SC or theirs? Uh, to play right tackle? or for to, just, play, to play offense instead of defense? Oh, that was completely my choice. I wanted to play offense line. Really? Yeah. Uh, Why? I enjoyed <laughs> I enjoy frustrating the defense lineman. I enjoyed it it's way too much. And <laughs> Why? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think it is about you that, that makes that happen? Well, it's just, um, you know, I just I like, the, like the game as far as just, if, even when I was younger, I'd see it as a, it was a big technique game. And, um, and so um, it was just a position that fit, fit natural for me. I tried to play tight end, couldn't run a route. And so. <laughs> Could you catch? Ah, uh, barely. <laughs> All right, back out to Jeremy. We've got another question. Got a question from my boy Justin from Mansfield. How you doing, Tyron? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, can you talk about whenever you were going into the league, who do you most idolize your game off of in terms of left, the left tackle position or the right tackle position when you first started? When I first started, um, the guy that was my mentor kind of looked out for me when I first got here was uh, Larry Allen. And just looked at a lot of a lot of film on him and had a lot of respect for how he, what he played the game. And I tried to mimic mimic that the best way I could when I first got here. Did you talk to Larry? Yeah, about? He, he was here a lot. So he, like any kind of things I needed help with, he had to he had to answer for it. What what kinds of things? I'm going to tell you in a minute why I'm asking you this. What what kinds of things did he try to impart? His biggest thing: punch the guy. He don't care what you do, just punch him. And as far as as far as like keeping your head out of blocks and things like that, and Feet the way you need fetch, fetch, uh, set your feet for uh, blocking and pass blocking and things like that. I always had a question about it. Larry Larry had a dispute with the coaching staff at the time near the end of his career, and there was a whole bunch of new technique stuff they were trying to teach him. They had a meeting at one point, and and Larry told the line coach, he said, Coach, I, I just want to mess up the guy in front of me, <laughs> except he didn't say mess. And uh, and I can just see a little, just a little tiny bit of that in you. I very much appreciate you taking time out tonight because it's not your day off. Oh, it's no problem. Uh, so thank you. Thanks for being here. And thank you. And won't you do the great Tyron Smith? And then take whatever that is in your back, take care of that, will you? <laughs> I got you. And let Lyle take care of his. Jeffrey, nice job. Monday night next week, we will see you right back here at the Omni Frisco at Neighborhood Services on the Cowboys Hour. From countless practices to...